So now uh, we are uh, going to discuss uh, uh, a, a topic uh, which is uh, uh, very very important when uh, we discuss uh, the supply chain management related issues. And this topic which I am going to discuss uh, during this lecture session that is uh, the supply chain performance measurement and evaluation methodology. Uh, in the last uh, the lecture sessions, I mentioned that, uh, uh, that the, for any uh, the supply chain uh, the network, uh, say the measurement system has to be uh, implemented and so that uh, the focal company uh, within the supply chain network uh, gets uh, a lot of benefits lot of advantages because in today's context uh, you will find in majority of the cases that the focal companies uh, the performance is significantly affected by uh, you know by many uh, the members of uh, and then the supply chain network either uh, you know this effect uh, the effect on uh, the performance both operational as well as uh, the financial performance this effect could be direct or the effect could be indirect. So, what is important is that uh, when uh, you analyze your operational performance as a focal company or you analyze your financial financial performance you need to know that to what extent your uh, uh, your performance is uh, related either positively or negatively uh, to the performance of uh, the relevant uh, the supply chain members. Okay. So, for that what you need to do that means a comprehensive performance uh, supply chain performance and evaluation methodology you need to use because uh, whenever you refer to the supply chain network it is a very complex entity and uh, there are uh, many factors uh, the interrelated there, there are, there are the, the dependency between all these factors. So, uh, uh, so you have to be uh, very careful and uh, uh, in, in, uh, in modeling uh, this entire network. So, that uh, you must not miss any relevant uh, the parameters in your modeling approach. So, here uh, what you are trying to do you are trying to uh, uh, say the discuss a comprehensive methodology for supply chain performance measurement and evaluation. Now, uh, let me just uh, uh, the tell you some important aspects. In the SC network there are three subsystems already it is known we have uh, explained the supply chain network from uh, the different perspectives. So, there are three specific subsystems you need to consider. The first one is the supply link, then uh, you have uh, the focal company this uh, and then you have the delivery link. For each of these uh, subsystems a number of performance measures are to be identified. The details are given for each. So, when you uh, refer to the performance measurement systems for the supply link. Three important uh, you know uh, uh, the dimensions of performance okay, you need to consider. One is uh, effectiveness, second one is the efficiency and the third one is the quality. As you may be knowing that uh, uh, the performance is a multi dimensional concept and usually there are, uh, uh, there are seven dimensions of uh, performance uh, like say efficiency, effectiveness, the quality, quality of work life, innovation, productivity and profitability. So, these are the seven dimensions and what you have to uh, uh, first uh, you have to uh, the select the appropriate dimensions against a particular subsystem. So, here for the supply link uh, you need to select uh, three specific performance related dimensions effectiveness, efficiency and quality. 
of incoming materials are to be monitored and controlled. Okay. The three performance criteria are effectiveness, efficiency and quality measures. An uninterrupted supply of items is to be assured for performance. What we have been pointing out that is a continuous flow of materials uh, that is to be assured and for that uh, many sorts of uh, the techniques you can apply like uh, DBR scheduling uh, under uh, the TOC or uh, you can use uh, you know the distribution uh, requirement planning systems, MRP systems and all those. So that uh, or uh, the GIT based approaches also uh, you need to adopt. So all these details we have discussed in our uh, previous lecture sessions. The details of the performance measures against the criteria are presented below. So what are these like the effectiveness measures? So how do you, uh, what is effectiveness? Effectiveness is an output or accomplishment issue, is a measure of an organizational system's performance which focuses on the output side of the system. It is defined as the level of accomplishment of functional values of products and services in fulfillment of the desired goals and objectives. So, this is, uh, uh, this is the, uh, the definition of effectiveness and then uh, uh, what uh, uh, you try to do that means for effectiveness uh, measures uh, that are identified for supplier link. What are those? Like the supplier delivery performance, supplier pricing, this is the second uh, factor and the third one is inventory days of supply of a particular plant. So, these three factors you consider and having equal weightage to each of these factors. So, now this is, uh, uh, this, uh, this is the way you calculate the effectiveness measures. Similarly, for the efficiency you have two specific uh, uh, the measures you consider and uh, and uh, once you the consider these two like the supply lead time and the second one is the purchase order cycle time. So, these are the two factors you consider you just uh, all the details are given. So, you please uh, go through all these details. So, this is uh, essentially the we have selected two important performance measures against efficiency and for uh, quality measure. So, how do you define quality in this context? Quality is pervasive throughout the entire systems. Okay. It is defined as the degree of conformance to specifications of activities of an organization system in relation to one or more of their desired values. It can be defined more operationally and in a way that facilitates measurement and that is consistent with the concept of the extended system. Okay. It refers to the quality of outputs or products produced or services rendered by an organization or supply chain entity. So, how do you measure? There are two important measures you consider for measuring uh, the quality. First one is achievement of defect free delivery. So, that is one and the second one is the supplier booking in procedure of plant I on tire J in period T. So, these are the two factors you consider and uh, you consider these two factors their values to measure the quality. Then so, the three important uh, say the performance measures you have considered for uh, uh, the supply link. For the focal company uh, the performance measurement systems when you talk about now uh, what uh, we, we are assuming that it is connected with a number of upstream and downstream members. It is a, it's a dynamic systems obviously. So, the five specific performance criteria, what are those criteria? Effectiveness, efficiency, quality and productivity and profitability. So, two more uh, the criteria we have added and then uh, the details uh, you can work out. That means, as far as focal uh, say uh, as far as uh, the focal company is concerned, its effectiveness uh, can be uh, say the measured uh, uh, considering four specific performance measures. So, this is the first performance measures that is order fill rate, 
the second performance measure is uh, is on time delivery the third one is the stock out fraction and the fourth one is the back back order fraction okay so these four factors you consider the performance measures you consider uh, to measure uh, the effectiveness similarly when uh, we uh, we measure the efficiency for the focal company you need to consider the four specific performance measures so all these four specific performance measures we have listed like order cycle time manufacturing lead time customer query time then purchase order cycle time delivery reliability okay and then uh, the capacity utilization so these are the four six performance measures you need to consider and what we are assuming uh, they are of uh, equal weightage similarly when you try to measure uh, the quality you need to consider three performance measures so all these details are here so please uh, you look into all these measures okay and uh, uh, so uh, so uh, measuring the quality will not be a problem only uh, what you need to do uh, only one thing you need to do that is uh, you need to uh, have an appropriate uh, data collection system that means with respect to each performance uh, the measures that you consider uh, you uh, need to collect data so uh, uh, now when you talk about the productivity measure uh, so it is essentially the relationship between uh, the output and input and uh, so here you need to consider the sales revenue okay as output and the purchasing cost as uh, an impact and then the manufacturing cost distribution cost inventory carrying cost then information carrying cost or information storing cost okay so the total inputs uh, you need to calculate and similarly you need to calculate the total output so when you consider total output versus total input you get the total productivity so uh, this way so it's in the ratio so obviously the output divided by the inputs so uh, you have the data corresponding to uh, all these uh, all these measures and uh, and you can measure the productivity of uh, the focal company while you try to measure the profitability that means that it it refers to the relationship between the total revenue and the total costs so all these details are here and now for uh, profitability measurement you need to consider two performance uh, measures one is the profit margin of the plant and the second one is return on investment is it okay now obviously you know one important uh, uh, say the issue is that uh, how many performance measures you need to consider uh, against a particular uh, say the uh, you know the performance criteria like say the effectiveness quality productivity etc so here uh, you know uh, uh, you have to uh, justify uh, that why you, you have been considering certain number of performance measures so here uh, in majority of the cases you uh, get the expert opinion or if you have uh, uh, sufficient experience and the knowledge uh, so obviously you you are the best person uh, to select uh, the appropriate uh, uh, the types and uh, and the number of the performance measures against a particular criterion so uh, this rule is followed and uh, now we we, uh, we we come down to say the third sub systems and which is basically the delivery link so as far as performance measurement system for delivery link is concerned now we need to uh, what is this delivery link that means the link is to be defined so the link is between the focal company and the downstream members in the supply chain so what are uh, uh, the four specific performance criteria uh, you may select effectiveness efficiency quality and productivity okay we are not uh, uh, uh say the uh, the measure like profitability may not be relevant in this context so again uh, uh, you need to consider the downstream uh, the supply chain and uh, so 
accordingly you uh, you define the or so you measure uh, the effectiveness uh, effectiveness uh, considering four performance measures and what are these four performance measure on time delivery of goods because you are essentially you're dealing with the uh, outbound logistic systems the second important performance measure is order fill rate okay like it refers to the service level transportation facilities and the response to urgent deliveries so these are the four factors you consider and you uh, you you measure the effectiveness for the efficiency you consider three uh, uh, three important uh, performance measures delivery lead time customer query time and the goods received note time receipt note time so these are the three performance measures you consider for efficiency for quality you need to consider the four performance measures number of customer complaints number of faultless deliveries quality of products and the transportation errors okay so these are the four factors uh, you need to consider for the productivity uh, again uh, uh, you need to measure the total productivity of plant i on tire j in period t okay so this way you represent and uh, you need to for the inputs you consider uh, four important factors or the measures and for the output you have you just consider uh, say the one particular measure so you have these ratios output by input and uh, you can measure uh, the uh, say the productivity now uh, uh, you need to apply a comprehensive methodology now for uh, uh, so what are the steps involved in uh, uh, the supply chain a, for a comprehensive supply chain performance measurement and evaluation methodology so we call it scpme methodology so uh, we have considered uh, three sub systems now what do you need to do and for each uh, uh, sub sub systems we have uh, uh, identified the performance measures and uh, prior to that we have identified uh, the relevant uh, the performance criteria so these details are known uh, so this is uh, 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 so first uh, you look into all these aspects so identification of uh, the relevant uh, performance criteria and corresponding performance measures so this is the first step now when you uh, apply a comprehensive methodology uh, obviously if, uh, uh, sometimes uh, you know uh, the network which you propose or which you use for which uh, such a methodology is is used uh, this uh, the network uh, may refer to uh, say a closed loop uh, the the supply chain closed loop supply chain uh, so whether it is an open loop supply chain or the closed loop supply chain or uh, the subsystem wise uh, the separate uh, uh, say the performance measurement methodology you propose so those are to be uh, those are to be uh, clearly uh, say the understood and specified so here what we are assuming that all the three sub systems are to be considered uh, simultaneously and that's why we are saying that this is a comprehensive uh, or say total systems approach for uh, measuring and evaluating supply chain performance now this methodology consists of uh, the six specific steps in the first step and on obvious reasons the these all these steps are interrelated in the first step you need to identify and link the performance measures with the measurable activities and the processes so that uh, we have already done so that is uh, uh, that is the first step so here certain comments we have made so what are these comments the selection of measures that means the performance measures is based on the operational performance criteria i have already mentioned the both operational performance as well as uh, uh, the financial performance both are relevant and here as far as the operational performance uh, criteria concerned you need to consider the effectiveness efficiency quality productivity and profitability in the plant from the view of both suppliers and the customers so 
there are five uh, you know the performance criteria for the focal company we have selected there are many ways of identifying the performance measures okay using performance measures questionnaire okay that means you get the opinion uh, of uh, the experts uh, uh, or the knowledgeable persons uh, uh, through questionnaire based uh, the survey categorizing existing ones that you can do and through brainstorming sessions uh, uh, through ngt session nominal group technique session so the performance measures identified here are based on categorizing existing ones in the plant okay so that uh, rule you may follow uh, the other uh, say uh, say the approaches also you can follow the variables are selected for measurement of plant performance are shown below for the focal company uh, what are those like the effectiveness measures what do you try to do the achievement score for the variable ratio of actual and plant uh, productions uh, for plant 1 on tire 0 in period t so this way you specify and uh, so you refer to the achievement scores and uh, these are the achievement scores okay so the four uh, performance measures uh, we have considered and against uh, each performance measures you need to have the achievement score and uh, uh, for getting this uh, the achievement score what you need to do that you need to bring in the concept of utility function similarly for the efficiency measures so 1 2 3 4 5 so uh, the five uh, specific performance measures we have considered and against uh, each performance measure uh, you have uh, the utility function and uh, then uh, against that uh, one particular utility functions you have the achievement score for a particular performance measure so you get all these uh, the values and uh, you uh, take the average is it okay so this is for uh, say the efficiency similarly the similar approach you follow for the quality measures so you just uh, go through uh, all these details details are given for productivity measures again uh, you consider uh, against a particular performance measures or against a particular uh, say the input uh, related factor or the output related factor the corresponding achievement score you need to uh, 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 you need to consider and for which uh, uh, you refer to uh, the the utility function so all these uh, uh, the details are given over here that means what you try to do that means you try to uh, get uh, uh, the values of uh, each measure at a particular time period okay uh, uh, in terms of the achievement scores and for uh, getting uh, these achievement score what you need to do that means uh, you need to have against each performance measure uh, the utility functions okay so all these details go through similarly for the profitability measures you have okay uh, in terms of the achievement scores so this is uh, the step one so you follow uh, this step uh, basically the step one uh, forms uh, uh, the foundation of uh, the methodology once uh, uh, the step one uh, is over then you go to step two so the step two uh, you go for data collection on the variables selected so uh, you will come to know what are the variables uh, and uh, against each of these variables you have to collect data the data set for a specific time period for each performance measure is to be collected from the company records okay that means uh, once you try to apply this methodology you must be uh, uh, say adequately supported by uh, the company's uh, uh, information system so information system support uh, is a must then you move to step 3 determination of the utility function for the variable selected i have already mentioned the utility concept is one of the techniques proposed to measure the performance of a company okay so uh, if you refer to the literature uh, so this is an well established uh, technique utility functions and uh, uh, 
uh, particularly in the domain of uh, so the multi criteria uh, uh, the decision making so uh, so this uh, approach uh, you can follow and uh, uh, so so it is uh, easy to understand and uh, it is a rational approach so and it may be a surrogate measure so an alternative measure but uh, it is very useful in the sense that uh, uh, if you uh, uh, you know uh, start uh, measuring uh, the performance with uh, this approach then uh, it becomes easier for you to uh, identify uh, the reasons of uh, or so the causes of higher performance or the lower performance and it becomes easier for you to uh, uh, to uh, to identify uh, the corrective or the preventive measures for improvement of performance so all these details are here so uh, here what you try to do that means you must have against each uh, the variable you must be able to uh, propose an utility functions so uh, so data the are to be collected uh, relevant data regarding uh, or with respect to a particular variable you need to collect and uh, then uh, you have to get uh, you have to go for plotting of the utility function so uh, so this is uh, so when you complete uh, uh, step 3 then uh, you move to step 4 that means conversion of data set values in terms of achievement score for all the variables selected so this point we have been uh, mentioning so once the data sets for the variables are collected they are converted into units of achievement score value with the help of their corresponding utility functions and polynomial equations already developed okay as values of the corresponding performance measures over a specific time period are to be computed using the corresponding utility functions of the variables then you move to step 5 you determine the performance of the supply chain entity that means either uh, say you now the supply uh, the link or say the focal company or uh, you know the delivery link so by applying the equations as given in step 1 to the achievement scores of the performance criteria obtained from the corresponding utility functions the overall score of effectiveness efficiency quality productivity and profitability criteria are computed in terms of as values over a specific time period now when you move to step 6 what do you do you evaluate the performance of the supply chain entity a number of evaluation approaches what are those you must be aware of benchmarking trend analysis etc may be used to evaluate the performance of the supply chain now uh, the trend analysis is preferred many a time because the benchmarking is a is a complex exercise so at the uh, at the first step or the you never go for benchmarking first you go for the trend analysis so the trend analysis uh, may uh, may be used to evaluate the performance of five specific criteria of supply chain entity under consideration and the next what you do the statistical techniques such as analysis of variance or so the anova may be used to interpret the results obtained from the proposed uh say the comprehensive model okay so here uh, the main uh, the issue is uh, that how to uh, identify the performance measures and what are the relevant uh, uh, say uh, the, the performance uh, criteria so as you might have noticed that uh, uh, that uh, this particular comprehensive methodology you can use even if uh, 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 there is a large number of members in the supply chain network so uh, my suggestion is uh, all the references are given so you refer to uh, uh, say uh, say the reference textbooks and uh, go through uh, the details and obviously you know as a learner you may have several queries and always uh, you should be in touch with uh, uh, with me for uh, clarifying any doubts and all uh, and uh, what uh, we are uh, this is the last session of uh, so the, the, the 12th week uh, and uh, obviously you know uh, 
uh, we have uh, the covered all the important topics uh, for management of inventory systems and uh, the starting with the classifications of the inventory problem and ending with uh, uh, say uh, the logistics and supply chain management and in between uh, the several uh, important uh, mathematical models as well as uh, you know uh, control uh, the techniques for uh, the inventory control uh, for uh, uh, so the inventory management uh, we have proposed uh, and online uh, the real time uh, uh, the control systems uh, for inventory management uh, when uh, for the mathematical modeling uh, uh, may be uh, difficult. Uh, so, uh, we like say MRP systems, MRP2 systems and uh, the DRP systems all these details uh, we have discussed and uh, uh, you have come to know that uh, under which situation you need uh, to apply the mathematical model and in which situations you must go for uh, say, uh, uh, say online real time control systems. And uh, though we are uh, talking about the inventory systems, but uh, you might have noticed uh, how the inventory system is linked with uh, uh, the production uh, systems or more specifically production control uh, is uh, is very much dependent on the inventory control and what is important is uh, the whether you apply uh, the traditional approach or you apply say the GIT based approach or the TOC based approach or uh, uh, say you uh, go for uh, say analysis of the, the supply chain management systems. So, two important aspects you need to uh, consider one is uh, the to what extent uh, you are uh, you are able to reduce uh, the order quantity as well as the inventory investment and the second important aspect is that to what extent you are able to uh, the maintain the flow of materials within your uh, the production systems as well as uh, in the inbound logistics and the outbound logistics uh, for uh, exclusively for the created for or the designed for your company. So, with this I conclude the session. So, thank you so much.